So the first case I'd like to, or use case I'd like to demonstrate is around quality of service and how we can leverage operations manager to really improve the quality of service that we provide within our organization. So here I'm looking at the operations manager console and I see the recommendations page and what happens is actually on the recommendations page we show all the major badges um, and any severity there as you can see the different colors um, but also we surface all the alerts within the environment uh, up on one page on one dashboard so you can actually start to troubleshoot and address, address issues from here so let's take a look at one of these alerts. So here I have a virtual machine that has a high chronic memory workload leading uh, to memory stress. So I got some memory stress issues within my environment. So let me go ahead and click on that alert. And then I can see that uh, there are five different objects that are actually impacted by this, but I'm just gonna select one of them here to go in and look at the details. And it provides me more detail here around it. It shows me essentially the uh, symptoms that are causing this. So I can see here that I have a high memory stress. And the nice thing about this alert is that it's an actionable alert, meaning it provides me an actionable button here, a recommendation with an action to take to address this issue. So here I can just click on set memory for the VM. And you know what, it's saying that its current VM is three gig and it's recommending going up to you know eight and a half or so but really I don't want to um, give it that much just yet. So how about I just you know, be a little bit conservative and I'm just gonna go up to five gig. And I do need to power this off because it's not a hot add OS here. Um, so I need to have it power off in order to add that. I'll just click on okay. And now what happens is it actually uh, goes out and starts to kick off this actual change so again it sees that this vm has been experiencing you know high memory stress for some time and so here's an alert and here's the action that i can take to address this and now i can go back and track that activity if you will or that action uh, if i want to in the administration page all right so we'll just go back to the home page here now let's take a look at you know some other potential alerts as well. Here's another one where this one is really around chronic CPU. So again, if I click on that um, alert there, it's gonna take me to the object. In this case, it was only one object. So again, it took me to the alert details of that object. I can see it's on impacted object is PVM web 03. That's my web server that's impacted. Again, my CPU stress is pretty high. I had defined in my policy that, you know, if my stress is above 50, I need to know. So my stress is around, you know, 56.72 here. So again, actionable alert. I can actually take action right here and I can increase the CPU. It's recommending going from one to two CPUs. Again, I'll need to essentially allow a power off or a power cycle on that. And then I can go ahead now and see the task ID, but I can also go right from here to the recent tasks, which simply takes me to the administration page, recent tasks, and now I can see it. So I can see that the setting the memory for the VM um, is already completed. The one that I just did now for CPU is already taking place. Now, uh, you know, something else that I can do here also, you know, you, let's say you you know, get a call from somebody and they say, hey, you know, I have a specific, you know, uh, app server and that app server is called TVM App 01, you know, and I'm having some issues on that. Well, you know, can you go in and take a look at that for me? So here you can go in, search for it, you know, it comes up, you can take a look at, you know, a summary page with essentially the, the surfaced alerts. But if I wanted to go and look at all the alerts that had been there, uh, a potentially even filter on, you know, remove this filter so I can check on, you know, previously active alerts that have gone inactive. So I can come in here and do some, you know, filtering and, and check different things. I can go in deeper and check and analyze this environment so I can do some analysis for, you know, for performance, for, you know, check to see if there's any abnormal behavior. I can check on its capacity and time remaining. So there's a number of different 
uh, areas here where I can check and these we typically call the minor badges so we can go in and, and check for these as well. Um, so let me just show you here if I scroll down again you can see the CPU memory and memory from the host you know and then any additional detail you know of things that I actually have turned on. But let's take a look under stress and I can see here that you know I have been experiencing some stress you know most of the stress here is really has been happening around you know Thursday uh, evening and pretty much all day Friday and so this is a you know an hourly average of the last six weeks and and that's the majority of the the stress that I'm experiencing I do have some other stress here and here and here but the majority again is you know Thursday um, and Friday so I can actually you know now you know see that here uh, very quickly um, let's take a look at the second server so now here I want to take a look at this server TVM app 02 so again that's another one that's part of this application um, again I can go in look at its analysis so you can see here the difference right you know TVM Apple one had a bunch of issues and the colors were not green and there was you know different things going on here but you know with this one you can see if I if I take a look at this one you can see I'm seeing deeper green Monday through Friday I have a little bit of stress on Friday night you know a little bit of Monday morning you know so Sunday and Saturday where it's not as deep in the green I am experiencing some you know minor stress nothing significant but I can take a look and see here in the past 30 days that my actual stress has you know gone down you know and I have sort of a fairly you know even level of stress so things are are looking uh, okay here but this just kinda gives you a quick view um, and also just somebody calling in say hey I have this these app servers you know zero one and zero two can you take a look at these for me why am I experiencing performance issues and you can go in and really start to dig deep and look at uh, any potential issues that are being uh, caused as a result so uh, let's uh, now switch gears and look at one of the other use cases Now let's talk about a, another use case around operational efficiency. So when we think about operational efficiency, it's really all about, you know, how do we optimize the environment, make sure it's running efficiently, you know, are my workloads, you know, configured optimally, that type of stuff, you know, where, where do I have the ability to reclaim capacity within my environment. So those are the type of things that you want to think about when we think about operational efficiency. So here again, I'm looking at the operations manager screen. And so let's take a look here at the very third column called efficiency again around optimization opportunities. Remember when you're at the home screen on the recommendations page as we when we surface all the alerts for the entire uh, environment and all you know descendants of the objects right from the root. Um, so if I scroll down here, you can see that I have a, a couple of different type of alerts, virtual machine with large disk snapshots, virtual machines are idle. Um, so let's just click on the first one here, virtual machine has large disk snapshot. We'll click on that and then I can see that I have, you know, five different objects that are impacted by this specific uh, uh, issue, if you will, here having large disk snapshots. So let's take a look at this one here, TVM Web 01. So I can click on the, the details of that alert and then it takes me to it and it basically, again, uh, gives me a recommendation. So it tells me that, you know, the symptom here is that the data, data store space usage is re reaching an immediate limit. Um, and the recommendation here is, you know, if the virtual machine has multiple snaps, snapshots, let's delete some of those older snapshots. Again, this is an actionable alert, so I can, you know, the recommendation has an, an action tied to it, when it, which is in this case, delete a new snapshot. I'll click on that. And so, you know, it's looking here at, you know, do you have anything that's older than 180 days by default? But, you know, that's, uh, that's uh, not what I want. I want to actually change it to minus one, which looks at very more recent um, snapshots as well. So I'll click on OK. And so that gives me essentially all snapshots, right? So instead of looking at 180 days, I could have went to one day. But because I had taken the snapshots on that same day, I want to make sure I go back to minus one. So it, you know, 
you know, it shows you everything that I've uh, I've taken, including those snapshots. So now I can see all the snapshots here that I have. I can select them, and I just simply click OK, and it's going to go out and actually execute an action to remove those snapshots and it's going to give me a task ID so I can go and track it you know just like I did earlier in the earlier use case let's take a look at another uh, type of uh, alert as well so the next one here I wanted to show is the virtual machine is idle so often you know this is one of the things we see in a lot of organizations where they have a you know, large number of machines that are configured using up resources and they're idle and you'll actually be able to see these under the reclaimable capacity so if you go in and look under the the clusters or the data center you'll be able to you know see that i have a number of different uh, virtual machines that are idle and that is essentially flagged as reclaimable capacity if you choose to reclaim it but here it's actually giving you all the virtual machines right on that main recommendations dashboard um, as part of this alert. So one alert, you know, multiple objects in this alert, you can see up to 17 in this list. But if you go and look at the details of this first one here, again, it's simply going to tell you that, you know, this machine, you know, is, uh, is idle and you have the action tied to this, which is essentially to power it off. And again, in the policy, you can, you know, decide what those uh, tolerance levels, if you will, or what are those levels when you consider a machine to be to be idle um, so anyways we'll click on the power off here and you can see um, it is uh, its idle percentage is 96 percent I think I had the policy here set to 95 percent so obviously this is triggered so I can go in and uh, say sure let's it's currently powered on but you know what uh, I'd like to go ahead and power that off so it kicks off a another task and I can see the task ID and we are good to go so another thing typically that you want to look at here is essentially around reclaimable capacity so you can you know continue from here essentially and go back into the UI um, and you know and dig down into for example you know the clusters of the data center you know into the environment as a whole and then look for reclaimable capacity as well uh, but I'm going to leave this use case as that. But, you know, we also do have a number of views that allow you to very quickly see all the different reclaimable capacities. So there's views and there's reports that you can generate around that. Now let's discuss the use case around uh, troubleshooting quicker uh, and resolving issues having a 360 degree view of our environment. Um, this essentially combines the power of operations manager and log analytics as well. So uh, let's take a deeper look. So here I am again in the operations manager console and you know I have these notification events um, that are coming through and you start to get used to the to these type of alerts as you you know start to leverage operations manager. So here I can click on notification events I'll go in and I see that you know two objects right now are impacted. Let me take a look at ESX02. And I can see I have a notification event, and this is actually coming in from Log Insight and saying, hey, you know, I have high latency on host ESX02A, and that's something I'm experiencing uh, right now. And this is actually coming from Log Insight. So this is a, a symptom that's being discovered in Log Insight, and that is actually surfacing here in operations manager so uh, but I'm in operations manager and I just saw this I'm like okay well this is interesting I need to troubleshoot so let's go and take a look at the details of that object so I can go into the details you know of that object I can see here that you know there's a notification event but I want to go in and do a little bit you know deeper you know digging here so I'm going to go to the troubleshooting and look at the specifically the events uh, tab and so I'm on the events tab here and I can see that I've had you know these notification events have been ongoing you know when I've been experiencing these and you can see here they're in the list notification events coming in from log insight so you know this is you know been ongoing so this is a little troubling right so but the nice thing is I see it here 
you know, I see it also, you know, uh, in, in Log Insight, and this gives me the power to basically look at, you know, here, look at the object and look at the, you know, the structured data in Operations Manager, but also be able to go and look at that unstructured data in the form of logs, you know, in the Log Analytics solution. Again, having that, you know, 360 degree view. So I'm going to go to Actions, and right from here, I'm going to do a launch in context to vRealize Log Insight. And so that will launch Vrealize Log Insight for me and filter on that specific object. So all the messages on that specific object. So you can see here ESX02A, ESX02A, 02A, etc., etc. So that's what's what's in that list. But now I can go in and so it's giving me everything here, but I can go in and start to, you know, type latency here and um, and really start to, you know look at latency and latency deterioration so I typed that in and now I can see that you know sure enough as I was seeing there I'm seeing these you know different events um, you know happening here on this specific object so now let's go and take a look at it and let's determine that and let's see the exact host name we already realized it's 02a but what I want to do is I want to click on apply and just confirm okay sure it's 02a but now, you know, my curiosity is saying, well, you know, is this just happening on this one ESX host or is it potentially happening on others? And if it is, you know, happening on others, wouldn't it be nice to know that? So let me remove this constraint here that came through the launch in context, which was really just focusing on that one uh, host name. And now you can see that, ah, this is interesting. I'm seeing, you know, high latency happening sort of at the same or similar times on you know other uh, host names as well so now I can start to really get kinda creative here and well now show me also the ESXi device ID so hey you know it'd be nice to see that so when I click on that now I can see here the NAA number you know you can see all the, the device IDs associated with this and now I can do things like hey what's the so what's the actual maximum latency that I've observed here and so I can click on apply there and now I can see that I'm having these peaks that are happening at these you know certain times and they're over like over 1 million uh, milliseconds here so again troubling right but you know I, I really like this view or this dashboard here uh, how I've kind of defined this interactive widget with these constraints so let me add this to my dashboard so I can click here and add it to my dashboard and you can see here it gives it a name I can give it a different name if I want to I'm just adding it to dashboard one I'll click on add and it says hey added the dashboard now I don't have to come in here and do all this digging essentially I have that you know dashboard you know created for me here so if I just go down into my dashboards again under dashboard one and you can see you know I've this bottom one here is the one that I just you know uh, recently uh, added as a result so um, it looks like this this one here is actually stretched right across uh, the screen so it's there for me now I can actually just come here and look at this and this is you know one way of you customizing and building your own dashboards if you will you know leveraging the log analytics solution but we give you you know uh, the vSphere content pack out of the box but also a marketplace where you can download and install your own content packs as well as you can see an extensive list here but let's take a look at you know the vSphere one so looking at the vSphere one um, you know here I can you know I'm I'm on the SCSI latency one so I can see here this is the, the SCSI latency that I was seeing here so if I was somebody that spent most of my time in the log analytics solution I would have seen those latency alerts as well but you know there's a general overview right so this is the general overview of your vSphere environment if I want to go in and take a look at you know problems this is where you know if you see no results here that's usually a good thing right but here you can see okay I got you know latency you know higher than you know one second uh, and it's showing you know so I can go in and, and get some additional detail so I'm seeing that here you know do I have any security issues again if I had any security issues you know, I'd, I'd, I'd see some, you know, vCenter server authentication events. So here I have some, you know, failed logins and whatnot um, that you can, you can look at and investigate and, 
uh, deeper if you if you choose to. Um, you know, just looking at the general inventory in my vSphere environment, getting any additional you know information around that. But you know, just to go back to that point where we started off with, which was around SCSI latency. Again, if I was somebody who used Log Insight most of the time, I would have seen this here in Log Insight, and I would have you know gotten those alerts here as well. And um, you know, because I have you know these out of the box dashboards, this one here specifically on SCSI latency. I'm actually seeing that you know high SCSI latency here and then from here I can jump into very quickly the interactive analytics with all the constraints that were related to that specific uh, dashboard and now it has all the constraints here as part of that I can scroll down and look through all the the different messages and you know, the nice thing also is if I was here and I was somebody, again, that spends more time in the log analytics solution, from here, I have the ability to launch in context back to Virilia's operations, uh, back into operations manager. So again, you know, in operations manager, I have a view of the structured data and the log analytics solution and log insight. I have a view of the uh, unstructured data. So again, together, that helps me troubleshoot, resolve you know issues quickly by having that you know uh, visibility of both sets of data uh, essentially here in in one place so i'm going to keep uh, this use case uh, at that and we'll jump into the next one now let's take a look at the use case of intelligent workload placement and balancing so again we're at the operations manager console here and there is a new dashboard that's out of the box that you'll see and it's called workload utilization and if you can't see it here opened up it's just simply you come over here to the dashboard list and you'll drop down from the drop the uh, dashboard list and you can simply open it up here and then you'll have it so we can go to this dashboard and so one of the things that you're going to see here is that you're going to see a number of different object types custom data centers which are essentially logical containers for different capacity providers that could span one or more vCenter. So you could have multiple clusters, for example, in this uh, custom data center, and these clusters could come from one or more different vCenter environments. In my case, it's just one vCenter environment, but you can see that I have custom data centers, and as soon as you hover over them, it gives you sort of the, the workload uh, uh, levels, if you will, or the workload percentage um, on these different ones. So I can see one is in the, my underutilized range. This is sort of the underutilized range. Here is the optimal range. And then over here, as you start to get into the pink and then the darker red, is that you can get into the overutilized red uh, range. Excuse me. Um, so looking at the next layer down, I have a data center. So here is my uh, data center. And in my data center, I actually have you know a much higher workload and in this specific data center here I have these two clusters so production one and production two now production two is really on the high end of optimal on the low end of overutilized so it's just kind of stepped up from 66 to 67 percent here and so now it's more on the on the pink side but I do have this cluster that is you know has significantly higher workload um, so Again, I can take a look at this and I can you know, get some additional detail on each of these by clicking the details and that'll take me to the details of each of these objects if I wanted to go and get additional detail around them. But I can also see the hosts essentially that live within these clustered objects. So here's this cluster has these uh, three hosts here that are part of it. These two hosts are part of this cluster. Uh, over here. So again, as you can see, some are overutilized, highly overutilized, and some are just in that, you know, that range of just being over uh, utilized or, or in the high end of optimal, low end of overutilized. So certainly I can balance these a little bit better. And so the nice thing here is, first of all, what I'd like to show is when I click on something, you'll be able to see 
you know where it's at so when I click on an object for example if you scroll down now you can see sort of the workload trend so I can look over time and see what the workload workload trend has been like and I can take a look at you know my workload for CPU and memory and how I'm doing also against the vSphere configuration limits but you can see you know I'm mostly constrained here for memory so we can see that here as part of this now the other thing um, that I'd like to show here is again you can go in and select any other object and take a look at it but I want to go back to that you know uh, data center so again you know when you look at the data center it's a combination of these two clusters so its workload as a whole is you know 95 percent because it's combining the different the two different clusters within the environment so you know when you combine the two my CPU is at 65 percent workload my memory is a bit higher and therefore it's red at 95 and so well uh, you know I have the opportunity here to actually do some balancing and have you know operations manager help me balance the workloads so I can go from here and go to the details of this object and now that I'm on the details of this object again I can you know dig down deeper into here and see what's going on and what's causing a lot of this but I actually can go to the actions menu and I can click on rebalance container so I can click on rebalance container and this will basically go out and look at the different VMs and the workloads and whatnot and it'll actually want to move things around so this says okay here are some of the VMs that are in you know production cluster one I'd like to move these to production cluster two and you know this will reduce the imbalance for memory consumption so what I'll do is I'll again begin the action so remember this is moving from one cluster to the next so it's moving from one cluster to the next right because DRS does all the balancing within the cluster boundary workload placement and intelligent workload balancing here will handle the movement across you know cluster boundaries okay so that basically is kicked off and that's happening essentially you know now in the, the background for us so in just a moment we'll go back to the um, workload utilization dashboard so if I go back to home and I'm just gonna wait a little bit and then we'll update the screen and we'll see what type of changes have happened here so now I've waited just a, a few minutes and I've gone back to the workload utilization dashboard here and so uh, let's take a look so here we are we're looking at the data center and so at the data center the AMS dash or underscore US if you recall it was around 96 percent workload and now you can see that its workload has certainly dropped and gotten closer to that optimal range and when I look at the two clusters if you recall also um, you know one of the clusters was around 67 this one here and this one was around uh, I think it was 98 or something like that so as you can see also this guy's workload has now dropped as well so again um, the only reason why they're not in the green here is because I have such a small environment that I'm demonstrating from and I've actually overutilized the hardware heavily here and so that's why you know I'm closer to the optimal and you know further in the overutilized range but if I was in fact a larger environment you know and I'm able to you know uh, balance things better across clusters and if I had a cluster in the underutilized or in the you know left side of the optimal range you know and so anywhere in this area here I would have certainly been able to bring these clusters you know within the you know closer to the middle optimal range here so it's a bit you know more challenging like in my environment here because again I am you know uh, overtaxed here but if I click on the AMS US data center and if I go down again I can look at this and I can see okay well now it's 42 percent 73 percent it was a bit higher but also if I look at that second cluster which was really high um, actually now that I think of it I think its memory workload was at a, was at hundred nine percent down here which is now down to 83 so its memory workload its CPU workload is down its memory workload is also uh, reduced as part of this 
you know, in intelligent workload placement and balancing. And, and again, you know, this is what I've been able to achieve here in a very small environment that's already overutilized. So again, imagine if you did in fact have a much larger, you know, environment and you're able to and have more, you know, clusters than, than just the, the two, you know, that I have within uh, my environment, then certainly you'd be able to, you know, balance you know this uh, environment even better and um, actually if you look at it now um, the screen just refreshed on me and so again this is you know where uh, workload balancing and workload placement works in conjunction with DRS as well so even though workload balancing moved VMs you know across the clusters to better balance the clusters then DRS will also say okay well let me balance the VMs within the individual clusters providing better balance so now if you look at this and you can see and this is actually perfect timing because it just updated live here as we were as we we're speaking right so when I, when I just uh, clicked again on the AMS and underscore US data center. And now I can see that, you know, two of my, you know, hosts are down here in the optimal range, right? And then, you know, my hosts, these ones are literally stacked on top of each other on the very far right. And again, my cluster moved over and this cluster is also, you know, now has, you know, reduced um, its workload. So again, I'm, I'm achieving that, you know, better, more optimal, balance leveraging you know uh, operations manager to help us through the intelligent workload placement as well as you know complementing and working together with drs in the background so it's really quite a, a powerful story here so thank you very much let's talk about the use case around uh, vSphere uh, compliance so uh, being able to have visibility all to also into your vSphere environment and seeing how well your uh, vSphere hosts and your virtual machines are doing from against the vSphere hardening guidelines. So um, here I'm running uh, again operations manager I'm at the main screen and under the risk column you can see here that I have you know an alert uh, stating that the ESXi host is violating the vSphere 5.5 hardening guide. So a couple of things just to note on this is uh, I'm going to go in here and like take a look at the details of this alert because right now it's showing me that five objects are impacted. There's a recommendation how to fix this. But also we do have the Excel spreadsheet here. So this is a link to the Excel spreadsheet that will download the hardening guide in the Excel spreadsheet for you. So if you wanted to get some additional details around all the different you know, hardening checks that we're performing. So I'm going to click on this alert, and as I had mentioned earlier, or it stated that there are five objects that were in fact impacted by this, I'm going to click on the first one here, and that is ESX02A. So I can go in and to the alert, I can see it's violating the vSphere hardening guideline. It gives me that. It shows me again, you know, go in and address these against, uh, you know, uh, against the vSphere 55 hardening rules, and here is the hardening guide if you want to download it. Again, there's another link here. You can download it and look at it. And then I can take my time and look through all the different um, uh, conditions or rules, if you will, that I'm, I'm uh, violating here. Um, the other option or the other place to see this is not just an alert, but you can also go to the object itself. And under the analysis tab, um, if you recall here, we had all these you know minor badges. One of the minor badges is compliance. And so if you've installed operations manager and configured uh, the vSphere um, compliance uh, alerts to show up then we will perform these checks and and you'll be able to see this so now here I can go in and I can see that okay I'm, I'm violating that's why my score is low the standards that are currently violated are the vSphere 55 hardening guide shows me how many rules there are that I'm, I'm violating so I can click on that actually and then it shows me the individual rules here the violated rules and I can see all the rules so if I really wanted to switch and also see the ones that I'm not violating or the ones that I'm actually passing if you will um, or my, the ones that I'm compliant with again you can see them in that list here and I can certainly you know take a scroll down and, and see the ones that I'm 
compliant with and the ones that I'm non-compliant with, you know, as a, as a result. Again, I can go further down and just see kind of from a relationship, you know, I can see that, you know, some of my, pe my peers also, that I'm on a host, so my peers are also non-compliant. I have a couple of children that are non-compliant. But let's go back home for just a moment and just do one more thing. So we'll take a look at another alert. Now this one is for the virtual machine. So the first one we looked at was the SXI hosts that are violating the hardening guideline. Now the virtual machines. And you can see here I have 17 objects that are impacted. So again, that's one of 17 here as you can see. Let's take a look at one of these. Similarly, again, I can see the conditions. I can download the spreadsheet. You know, I can go in, get additional detail around all the different conditions that I'm violating. Or I could, you know, go to the object itself under analysis and go to the compliance section. Again, very similarly, see the vSphere hardening uh, um, guideline standard here. And I can scroll down and see all the different, you know, conditions that I'm, you know, uh, non-compliant uh, with as well, but also take a look at my peers here and see that okay, you know, I have other VMs, my peers also have, you know, varying degrees of, you know, non compliance against the vSphere hardening guide. So, again, you can take a look at that. Now, let's just go back home for a moment. Uh, one of the things that I've done though is I've actually created a dashboard and I uh, just called it vSphere compliance summary so this is something that you know you can also create because you can create custom dashboards in operations manager so here for example just simple scoreboards and heat maps kind of showing the compliance of the environment so here I'm looking at the scores you know for the different you know objects and you can see them here um, you know, my compliance trend, I can go and take a look at host system compliance, virtual machine compliance. So I have these different heat maps down here and, and so you can, you know, take a look at, uh, at those. So again, you can customize and build your own, you know, dashboards here. And the nice thing about having this as a dashboard now, essentially I could, you know, run this as part of a report. So in reality, I could add this dashboard to a report and run this. Uh, compliant as a compliance report on a regular basis showing my compliance posture against the vSphere hardening guide.